Please be a good person like this doggo. Which one of history's good guys was actually a horrible person? Thomas Edison. Biggest monopolist ever, and took credit for other people's work. He didn't invent the light bulb, but bought the rights and advanced it. He monopolized the film projector plus most films at the time, and it took a very long lawsuit to get that fixed. He took many creations from his employees and put his name on it. This wasn't illegal because of the contracts employees signed at the time, but it's not exactly a sign of goodwill. I don't hate the guy, but his character is often completely exaggerated. Henry Ford was so anti-Semitic that Hitler considered him a hero. Brave New World makes a whole lot more sense now. How? I haven't read the book. Basically, bunch of genetically identical people idolize assembly lines and worship Henry Ford as their god. Yes it's as weird as it sounds. America's dad, Bill Cosby. Who was the mom? Sleeping Beauty. We've been watching 30 Rock in our house lately, and in a recent episode that predated the Cosby revelations by a few years Tracy Morgan makes a joke about Cosby being a terrible person for assaulting his aunt. That was pretty crazy to hear in context today. Alfred Hitchcock was in a whole slash sexual predator. Tippi Hedren wrote about it in her memoir. She did say he was a brilliant film marker, so you can be both. Luckily, no other famous directors were sexual predators. I've been roaming around this thread looking for this reference. Would he been better if you had stayed put? Not necessarily a good guy, but got lots of positive attention from the release of The Greatest Showman. Apparently P.T. Barnum was a terrible person in real life. The Greatest Showman is a film P.T. Barnum would release about himself. I remember someone on r slash fixing movies said the perfect way to end the film would have been to have P.T. Barnum look directly at the camera, saying that's how it really happened, wink, and then cut to credits. Amazing entrepreneur. Yes. Hilarious scam artist. Also yes. Evil mother ducker. Abso ducking lootly. Considering he's usually attributed the phrase there's a sucker born every minute. I can kinda see that. My favorite story about him is the egress. He put up a sign in one of his showrooms that said come see the amazing egress. One dollar out of people bought tickets only for the door to lead back outside. Egress is a fancy way to say exit. He also sewed a mummified monkey top half to the back half of a fish and called it a mermaid. John Lennon. Violent with a beater, vicious, and hateful little shutbag. He used to scream at his baby boy when he was crying because it distracted him. Wrote Imagine speaking about dreaming of no possessions from his multi-million dollar condo overlooking Central Ducking Park in New York City. Didn't speak to George Harrison for months after he published his autobiography because it didn't praise Lennon quite enough for his taste. Absolute piece of shut. Don't forget he essentially ended his marriage by lounging around nude with Yoko, who was wearing his wife's robe when the wife and kids got back from vacation. His response? Oh, hello. While he almost certainly wasn't the first to say it, Lord Acton once observed that great men are almost always bad men. Pluck any great man from history, those rare figures about whom the story of the human race seems to turn, and you find a monster who changed the world, probably without even intending to do so. It's my estimation that every man ever got a statue made of him was one kind of a son of a bitch or another. Malcolm Reynolds. Steve Jobs was a bit of an ass. A bit? You should read Small Fry. Steve Jobs was a tremendous a hole. Bid was an understatement. The guy was a massive credit hog, abused his employees, and normalized a lot of shit business practices that are now used by several other companies. Didn't he die because he refused treatment to cancer? He had pancreatic cancer and refused to listen to his doctors for treatment. He thought he was so much smarter and he somehow came to the conclusion that an all-fruit diet would cure him. This was possibly the worst diet you can put your pancreas through, and it lead to his death. Fun fact, when Ashton Kutcher was getting ready for his role as Jobs in that movie, he ate an all-fruit diet but had to stop when he was admitted to the hospital because his pancreas started to shut down. Tinkerbell. Everybody thinks she was so cute and such a good friend to Peter, but she was a jealous psychopath and tried to murder Wendy several times. I mean, in the book she only did it once. Because that makes attempted murder better. Ned Kelly is neat because he seems to have recognized his inter-hero status. 
his actions were never morally right, but it's hard to say we haven't ever wanted to do the same. IDK I feel like a lot of Ned Keller's actions were justified, if you take his accounts as opposed to the policeman he dealt with. The truth is likely somewhere in between. There's no excuse for his early theft, but those wouldn't make him a horrible person by today's standards. Jibidi Springfield, or his real less commonly known name, Hans Sprungfield the murderous pirate. You're banned from this thread. You and your children. And your children's children. For three months. This is a little more niche, but Bill Wilson, the founder of Alcoholics Anonymous. The guy did great things, and created a program of recovery that has saved millions of lives since its inception 85 years ago. He was also an arrogant asshole that cheated on his wife even in sobriety. Edit, this isn't here to scare away anyone that's trying to get sober. I've been sober thanks to AA for 5 and 1 half years. So don't let this keep you away if you're struggling with your drinking. Nothing is black and white it seems. Zebras would like a word. Joseph P. Kennedy, dad of John, Bobby, and Teddy had one of his daughters lobotomized. She was likely autistic, but was considered an embarrassment to the family. Rosemary Kennedy was never considered autistic. When her mother, Rose Kennedy was giving birth to Rosemary, the doctor wasn't available, and Rose was told to keep her legs closed until the doctor arrived. Baby Rosemary was in the birth canal for about 2 hours, being deprived of oxygen the whole time, which resulted in severe learning disabilities. There's a statue of Oliver Cromwell in London. Loads of movies about him and how he was a brave revolutionary. Nap, duck that. He was an evil sociopath who committed genocide on Irish Catholics and turned the UK into a Puritan dictatorship. I'm amazed statues stand. I thought he has been hated by the general populace pretty consistently since he took power. After the monarchy restoration the people hated him so much that they dug his corpse back up to posthumously execute him. Who decided it was a good idea to erect statues of him. Alexander Graham Bell. This man did not invent the telephone. Several people were working on similar technology at the same time. Antonio Muxi invented it first, but there was a court case over who got the patent rights. Muxi died before the case was settled, and Graham Bell won the glory he didn't deserve. Bell was also a eugenicist who sought to end sign language in schools and wanted to ban deaf people from marrying each other. He was a staunch oralist and the repercussions of his actions are still being felt in society today through such odd institutions like the Bell Institute. Ellen. Apparently she's not nice at all. Plenty of mistreated staff have a dory to tell. I always thought she was a little fishy. We'll see about that. Bob Molly. And there's a very good story to back this up that also explains how he grew to be number one reggae singer of Jamaica. He had a posse of friends that would intimidate radio networks of Jamaica into playing his music, as well as destroying the alpha discs of other newer artists, IDKWTF they're called, but the copy the radio networks were given in order to play on the air. He might have been trying to promote feel-good music and peace and all that, but he was a thug when it came to getting that music out. And at the same time, gave a Jude song writing credit so that he'd get royalties from the music and be able to keep his soup kitchen open. People are so weird. Bully one guy, help another, rape his wife, help a guy keep his soup kitchen open. Duck. Mother Teresa. An old co-worker worked with her. She was a former nun who said Mother Teresa was ruthless and cruel to all of the nuns who worked alongside her. Wait till they find out about the tens of thousands of people who died under her watch at her hospitals without getting basic medical care. Turns out the nuns weren't the victims. IDK man. When I read about Martin Luther last year, I thought he was kinda cool as he created the Protestant branch of Christianity, but I recently read about what he thought of Jews and yikes. For those of you who don't know, he got pissed when the Jews didn't want to convert to his religion and started being anti-Semitic as duck. He wrote a whole book on Jews and their lies, and said that he urged others to burn down synagogues to prove their loyalty to Christianity. He also wanted the Jewish prayer books to be taken away from them. Elvis Presley. He never wrote a song in his life, but his record label made any songwriters hand over half of their writing fees before Elvis would record their songs. He's credited as a co-writer on the majority of his songs. That's why Dolly Parton refused to let him record I Will Always Love You. She wouldn't sign away any of the songwriting credit or future profits from her work. 
she's a savvy businesswoman. Young, Gandhi was racist. Two random quotes from him. General belief seems to prevail in the colony that the Indians are a little better, if at all, than savages or the natives of Africa. About the mixing of the Kafirs with the Indians, I must confess I feel most strongly 